Terminators. Whether be a T-800, CG metallic slime, or little bugs that like to eat fancy woods, they are all merciless, empathetic androids donning head antenna with one mission and one mission only. Enforce the laws of the robotic overlords while sniffing out oak hoarding rebels. But there's no need to fear the Terminator as they look and act just like us, down to their love of Espanol, snacking down on some cedar chips and their synthetic human-looking flesh that may actually be human flesh because I don't think it's ever mentioned how it's so lifelike. But these robotic-made police officers of the future are just trying to protect their homeland, the Earth. But what happens when a goddamn pig from space comes to tell us Earthlings how to act, how to drive, and how jaywalking is now a crime? I'll tell you what to do. Not a dang thing, because this guy's got a freaking gun and a mech the size of a hundred Terminators. So if you see a space cop drop down from the heavens, do the smart thing and kill yourself to the heavens this bureaucratic devil came from. My name is James. And I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Sentai. Oh, <laughs> guys, my name like is Amolam and Nicole don't like it, but she put a ring on it. Yeah, I wish. I wish she would. Oh, my God. She's an owl for my heart. Remember, owl a friggin kid. We with our current guest, but we're not going to introduce him just yet. Told you to friggin spin a kid's head around 360 style. Oh, or maybe go for the coveted 900 Tony Hawk style. But guys, today on Carl Ranger, we learned when the pedestrian green signal is flashing, don't cross unless a friggin' hungry coyote's behind you saying, scrum nom nom, scrum nom nom. You gotta book it the freak out of there. But guess what? We also watched a second episode, which we including learned when there's a sidewalk, make sure you're walking along the sidewalk again, unless there's a hungry coyote who, when he sees you, he's actually seeing a floating chicken leg in the air. Ooh, it's steaming looking delicioso. Mwah, muy caliente. That means el fuego. Ay, papi. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay until we got to that point. No. I... I puppy. No. I love it when you call me I puppy. No. Oh. What's our... that new song that's out? What new song? That's like, call me your senorita. It's called Senorita. Yep. Ooh. Got it. It's horrible. I don't know. What about <laughs> Despacito? Isn't it weird how there's always every summer a multilingual song out by white by people? By multilingual, you mean it's like... One Spanish yeah. word. <laughs> Despacito. I'm Betty Boop, Marilyn Monroe, when she sang. When she wasn't too busy flashing them tatties at Hugh Hefner, who she did not like. Men idolize this man, Hugh of the Hef, but he was a piece of shrimp. I didn't give a shit about him. Yeah, guys, because he wasn't into hardcore porn like our guest is. What? Yeah, guys, you gotta be into the hardest of porn, you know, muscular, veiny ones. But, guys, um, today, Nicole did dishes, and I thought, how is Nicole doing dishes so quickly? And I came up with this song. It was like, how Nicole does dishes so quickly. She used no soap and no scrub brush. She just uses water and Franklin's tongue. Lick, lick, lick. She also uses her own. No, because I told you how. I leave the water on to rinse out the other dishes while I'm washing one. So then by the time I get to those ones, they're already rinsed off. I pre-rinse all of mine too. Yeah, but I do it while I'm doing, I'm multitasking. So, so do you scrub every dish? This is a, yes. this is a better question. Okay, then that's totally fine. Because James, the song he came up with had me very concerned. Of course I was joking. But let's get to our let's get to our guest. Wait, you did like 
eight takes of Espanol. Espanol. And did not no. retake when you said Carl Ranger. I don't care because that's, <laughs> I need the intro clean. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, despacito, umami. That's a flavor. You shit your pants. Oh, you wish. You know I don't do that. I just got that open sore that I have to drain okay. sometimes. I hate that bit so much. It's yes. fucking gross. Ooh, speaking of things that are gross, not our guest. I'm talking about that Pillsbury Doughboy blanket. He got them dead eyes. I'm about to leave. Uh, what? No, you're not. You love being on podcasts. I do, but... <laughs> you know, like, when you're going fishing, you need bait? All you need is a hook. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> to reel in Jose to be a guest on his podcast... On uh, a podcast. Wow, that makes me sound like a cheap whore. No, I'm saying you're, you're a, like... A non-expensive kitten. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to say, I uh, like, not too bright fish. <laughs> Because a fish is just eating a hook. Don't do that, guys. All of our fish listeners out there, we got a bunch of mermans. Uh, don't friggin' eat a hook. Yeah, guys, don't don't eat a hook. What is wrong with you? Unless it's one of the meat hooks, baby. No. Going to the carnival. Going to the carnival. What is that? I'm my chemical From SpongeBob, romance. from the episode where they think a bunch of hooks is a carnival ride. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking. I thought you were going to start singing, I'm going to the cemetery to dig up some graves. Some going to grave. the cemetery grave. to <laughs> dig up some graves. Some <laughs> graves. That's a chronic wig split, as I believe it is, from cool. Colorado Springs. I didn't know what to do, so I tried to beatbox, but I, as you can tell, I cannot. Oh, okay, guys. Should we intro our guest? Uh, yeah, our guest can it, be included on our housekeeping up top stuff. You know him from many episodes of our podcast, mm. or maybe James, you've heard him please on... please sing his name like one of those songs. Okay. Oh, yes. No. I know exactly <laughs> no. what you mean. Uh, <laughs> please <no. laughs> You know him from Hit It and Crit It as Giram, but we know him as... Ho Salito, uh, our good friend Jose. I mean, you sang it, but not like one of those songs. Yeah, uh, like da. Oh, Ho Salito, no, no, like no, one of the no. mixed language songs. Yes, I'm singing it like Despacito. No, you're not. Despacito. It so, is not that slow at all. Oh, oh I'm doing the acoustic you would say, remix. You would say, to a will dance you song. be my Jose Lito? No, no, no. No, I think I've heard this song a little James, more times than James, thine. James, Yes, Eye my context. love. Uh, um, <laughs> kiss me through the mic, why don't nah. you? Oppo <laughs> uh, kiss. No, I'm done. <laughs> Oh, Nicole nope. just walked out. I was going to do a funny thing. and What? Nope. Okay. No, I'm, I'm not doing it. Le- okay, reset. I'll edit no. all of this out. I'm not oh. going to edit it out, guys. <laughs> no, it's past. The oh. moment is past. Past? Like not my love for you. Guys, th- it was... Jose's also been introduced, remember... A couple days ago, September 30th, not only was the day of my birth, a.k.a. before six years ago, it was the worst day of my life, but now it's the greatest day of my life. Actually, maybe September 18th might be a little bit better because that's the first day I laid my eyes on my beautiful queen. I am your champion, Nicole. But September 30th was the day we made it final. And I accidentally said I love you to her the day we made it final. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh. But she didn't care. She said, this goofball is my wonder boy. And Jose, how do you feel about Nicole and I's love? I mean, I'm happy for you. Oh, kindest words have never been spoken. Uh, I mean, kinder words. Yeah, that's probably kindest, the phrase. The kindest of words. But guys, because it was my birthday, or maybe you want to celebrate our anniversary, please go on Redbubble. It, there's a link in there. And buy a Gorma t-shirt for yourself. Buy it on a wallet or a sticker, whatever. Just like show your appreciation for the show. Give me a happy birthday. By buying one of those, you get a cool t-shirt that a print of something Nicole made. Or just tell a friend about my podcast. Or maybe you want to listen to one of mine that you've never heard. Jose, you can just talk. I don't want to interrupt you. I was going to say, like, just keep when, going. They, when they purchase something, can they leave a note? Maybe. Ooh, my throat was thick. 
Do you know, Nicole, if they can leave a note when they purchase the shirt or something from just Redbubble? Just email us w- I don't or know. tweet us with the order summary. What's up? Yeah, it was just to say, like, you know, when you order whatever the fuck it is you want to order, just let them know that it's for their anniversary. I'm like, happy anniversary. We're happy for you guys being together for uh, six years. Also, you yes, that would be so great. But I will know that you're buying something because of this if it happens within, you know, like the next week. Because not a dang purchase has been made on our Redbubble account. So please, you might be the first. Ooh, pop that high, <laughs> man. You thought I was going to say cherry on top. Oh, the perfect of Sunday. A cherry is there, except for Nicole says, no thank you for a cherry unless it's Marciano. You mean Mariano's? No, I mean machete cherries. That's a cherry that you eat and it has a really like slicer of a stem. It has okay. a razor yeah, blade yeah, in no, the no, middle. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's called a Halloween cherry in some That's regions. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I've, I've read about those. Or... Despacito de la muerte. We're done. Let's move on. With this bit. I apologize, sir. Uh, I mean, I know you're Puerto Rican, but like you gotta take no, it easy. No, okay, no, that you can't. No, <laughs> no. I got you. Bitch. I, yeah, I was. I knew he would end up saying this because he knows that I don't enjoy that bit. It's a bad bit, guys. Listen to what the now hell. You know mouth. how I feel when Rudy tries to say anything in Spanish. Yeah, Rudy speaks fluent Espanol. N- you Espania. shut your mouth. He's there right now, finding us gifts. I don't. He even asked about stuff for Nicole. <gasps> yeah. Wow. I haven't even gotten a message like that from him because he's he's asking other people. Oh. Or he just knows you. No. You friggin' dunce yeah whoa 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 i rolled pretty high for charisma to not have a dunce cap no no you had the c word cap remember yeah but i rolled pretty Uh, high and i didn't have it anymore okay crits cap oh listen to hit it and critic guys i dm'd for the first time the this week and the following week there will be a three-part series but guys yes Speaking of anniversaries, Nicole and I's anniversary for this podcast is coming up. One year on, I believe, October 18th is when the episode will drop. Let me check on my, check it on my cell phone. (laughs) Were you singing that too? Yes. Yes, we are so in sync like Justin. While you're pulling this up, I'd like to mention something. So we were watching the episode... Sodes, episodes, uh-huh. apostrophe, yes. And James goes to the kitchen to serve himself some generic wheat thins. I don't know what the what they were called. They're called wheat crisps by Kroger. There you go. Fancy. And I thought he was pouring himself like a bowl of cereal. And then I didn't, I didn't hear any milk get poured into the, the bowl. And he comes and sit down and I look at the bowl and it's just the wheat crisp and a spoon. And then I thought to myself, why the fuck is he eating this with a spoon? And then I realized who I was talking to. Yeah, guys, I eat everything with a utensil until friggin' Jose tried to show me up one-upsmanship and say, Hey, James, so you'll eat candies with your hand, but you won't eat wheat thins? However, they were Tums, they were medicine. Same thing. For my ulcers who are tearing apart my stomach right now. Nicole, you have anything to say about the the Tums candy thing? Nah. I don't want greasies on my finger. (laughs) I don't even want grease on my face. If I could perpetually have like a windshield wiper on my face to just scrub away grease at all times. Yeah, baby. Yeah, me too, because I sweat a lot and it's disgusting. Oh, man. Sweat's sexy, though. (laughs) Yeah? If you're into it, I guess. One of uh, my old porn search terms was like like female sweaty okay (laughs) and then you just find like a lady in a sauna and she's naked okay because saunas create sweat do they or does it just is it just really humid and then the moisture in the air accumulates on your body yes i know i think that too but don't ruin this or sometimes they're in like a hot room is it a a dry because it depends i think it's a dry sauna sauna. yeah okay they're not like yoga yeah, they're doing some hot ass yoga. But guys, our anniversary episode I think is coming you mean up. Hot ass yoga. Yeah, baby. We'll be recording it around hot. October 17th. Hot ass yoga magic. Ooh. How about that? Yeah, see, my Mac would be. <laughs> 
a play on Titanus? Titanus? Yes. Tetanus? It would be Titanus. Okay. Ah. You're welcome. I would just have tetanus. <laughs> okay. You know, the thing you get from getting cut by something that's rusted. Yeah, my sister once cut me with a knife and I didn't want to get, I was like, yeah, I whatever tetanus is, was I was a boy. one time. Yes, but I was a boy. And we haven't talked about the tetanus angle. I was like, I don't know what tetanus does, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's better <laughs> to- I'm pretty sure it's bad. <laughs> To have tetanus than to get a shot, and they were like, "No, you need this <laughs> shot." Like, you, I don't think I could go to school without getting this shot. Yeah, I broke my arm when I was like six, and my mom's like, "We need to go to the hospital." I was like, "No, I'm okay. I can move it." And I'm crying, trying <laughs> to move my my arm. Like, uh, see, I can move it, and she's like, "We are going to the hospital." I'm like, no, it's okay. I'll be fine. I'm okay. And then she rushed me to the hospital and. Gave me so much shit for breaking my arm, which it wasn't my fault. Whose fault was it? My sister's friend. Says you. Uh, you know, and the the at the park, the jungle gym, they have that thing where you hold on. It's like the monkey bars, but it's not, and you just like it has like wheels on it, and you slide across. Yeah, it's like a zip line. Yeah. So I was yeah. like maybe three foot tall. Ooh, a tall six year old. I'd be um, afraid of you. I was pretty tall. Um, and my sister's friend was like, you know. Let's put you on this and slide you across, and then, uh, you know, I'll, like, help you get down. Older friend or younger friend? The same. Okay. Same age as my sister. My oh, sisters oh, are- I'm saying the older oh, than you or- Older. Older okay. than me. Like, significantly, like, could yeah. actually catch you? Yes and no. Oh. They were, like, 14, 13, 14, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's more than a half an age. So, we're just, I'm, like, I get- Push along the little zip line thing, and then he's like, "All right, just hold on tight, and I'll go, I'm gonna come grab you." And I was like, "Okay, but hurry up, cause my hands are slipping, cause I'm fucking weak, a weak fucking child." Like James said before, I have a heavy head. <laughs> oh yeah, we forgot so. about that. <laughs> oh man, that little thin neck of yours was doing a workout that yeah, day. Yeah, so like you know, my head was pulling me down. My muscles were non-existent, and then, like, the minute he got to me, I, like, let go, and he couldn't catch me in time, and my, like, my left arm twisted behind my back, and I, like, Oy. landed on it, and all I heard was a crack, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, you know, like, that was a good crack. Oh, you no. know, like when you crack your your um your knuckles, your knuckles? No, I thought that's, that's what it was. That's a bad crack. And then next thing you know, I couldn't move it, and I was starting to freak out, like, I've done this thing since I was a kid where, like, if something is freaking me out, I don't say anything about it, but you can tell by the look on my face, and I'm not, like, trying to <laughs> do anything about it. It's like when I start talking in Espanol. I'm gonna go. Yeah, that face. So, yeah, my sister decided to take me to my mom, and my mom's like, I think your arm's broken, and I was like, no, I'll be okay, just give me some eyes. Was it broken? Oh, yeah, it was a fracture on the inside of my elbow. Ooh, I Gotta hurt. Did you call that friend of hers a weak ass punk because he couldn't <laughs> catch a six year old? No, I mean they were much older than me, so I'm pretty sure if I started talking shit, they would beat my ass. She would be a crippled person, is what you're saying. I don't know, man. Like this was the my mentality. I What's had his at... name? Call him out on the pod. Honestly, I don't fucking remember. Oh, I guess what? It was James McCullum. James quit trying to start shit. Hey guys, it'll be great for the podcast. If we start a yeah, beef so like, with someone no one so knows. I'll, I also have this he's famous beef, apparently with somebody. Okay, yes. So let's get to the <laughs> anniversary show. Also, I've broken my arm. A babysitter slammed it into a van door and it snapped. It was a sliding door and like I was like trying to push it and she was like, "I got it." And then like as I was pushing it, she pushed it back and it just like snapped like between the door and the door frame. <sighs> Yeah, baby. And then Spider-Man autographed it at Universal Islands of Adventure, Florida. So, our we want to do for our anniversary show fan voicemails. Uh -huh. Send in voicemails. You can record a video and I'll just extract the audio from it. I know how to do that. I'm fancy. Or just record it and send it to mssspod at yahoo.com. Or you can DM it to us on Facebook at mssspod or on Twitter at mssspod. On Instagram, I don't know. I think the videos go away possibly. So let's yeah. just not even deal with Instagram, fam. But speaking of us doing this for over a year, 
our friend Melzer, who we saw the premiere of Todd Groban's Going Away Party yeah. just over the weekend, and it was flipping amazing. Follow either at Muscular Clown or at Channel Flux. Flux is F L U X X to just like know right away once it starts releasing. It should start releasing soonish, we hope. At least the trailer will, is what I've been told. And I worked on it. Pete, who was on last episode, worked on it. He's in it. He's fucking amazing. And the episode's great. It's like a six or seven part mini series, web series. It's great. But Melzer has held the record for most appearances on Mostly Speak and Sentai. Until today, Jose has now beat him. I believe you've been on five times. Melzer has been on four. Take that, son. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Melzer's not happy about it. Hey, 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 hey. You know, I'm right here. You can come find me. You can DM me on Instagram. That's Lito underscore L underscore Cubano. That's L-I-T-O underscore E-L underscore C-U-B-A-N-O. So DM me if you got a problem, son. I'm right here. I think he's just going to come on the show and shit talk you. You should have both of us on there. I told him about, like, an idea for a Small Soldiers podcast, and he said... Have me on every episode, but Jose can't be on a single one. Man, fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, man. I don't really know. He, no, you're doing a shoot promo right now, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. the sorry, big sorry, wrestling sorry. league. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, um, fuck. I don't know what to say. Talk about Morph Bots and how he doesn't own the rights to yeah. the footage. Yeah, you don't own the rights to the footage, Melzer. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm heating on him. heating on you, dude. Say he did very well in a film festival oh. multiple times. That's yeah. not a dig. You just want to honey roast him a little. Yeah, you're fucking talented, dude. We get it. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> oh, man, Nicole, you got anything to add to this beef? You are starting a beef. Yeah, some <laughs> That's the point enough. of this bit. Yeah. Yeah. Baby. I, like, I was trying to make a diss track a diss rap for Melzer, but like I halfway through it, I realized I should probably just stick to whatever it is I do in my daily life. I start rapping, dude. I'll teach you how. It's very easy. <laughs> do I have anything else up front? I don't think I do. Tums is candy. We got it all, guys. The dishes, Nicole licks. Oh man, guys, I'd pay to see that. <sighs> what? I'm in love with you. I love you, too. Say it to the heavens and to the audience. No. Oh, man. I'll just repeat what you when you said, I love you. And You guys are just a cute couple, aren't you? What the a fuck? Hands- oh, that's the other thing. Okay. Guys, just like Rudy. God Jose, damn. Jose, again, guys, don't talk to us before the podcast. I, I tell you these things <laughs> with the utmost confidence because I feel like- Yes, because you're, you're confident. my friend. Yes, so uh, circumstances happened where Jose is now on Tinder, but he's like, I don't like Tinder. However, Rudy, after our coaching, found a great match. So, guys, we got another Tinder coach in. <laughs> We're going to do this real quick, but also so pristine that you can find any man or lady out there, okay? Do you still have the app on your phone? Nope. You got to re-download it. Oh, no, you shouted out your Instagram. Hey, ladies in Chicago, hit up our boy. Okay. Yeah, if you want to be with somebody who's kind of funny but also has depression, what's up? Oh, but he might be on stuff to make him feel better, aka also, weed's legal in January. I'm just a piece of shit. And a plagiarist, but not no, really. Just a piece of shit. I don't don't say front bottom <laughs> lyrics so I can not, piggyback I'm off not, from them. I am not saying front bottom lyrics. You know why? Because I don't know any front bottom lyrics. Okay, ladies. My name is we, not Corey King. We all know ladies love front bottom. So please, uh, th- he's lying right now. Hey, Jose. Yeah. Just like back in like 2006, men needed to love Maroon 5 because women loved Maroon 5. The women you're going after love front bottoms. That's not true. Or probably like Dance Gavin Dance. Gavin Dance Gavin, which is the correct it's one. The first one. It's the first Dance one. Dance Gavin Dance. It's an exclamation to all of the Gavins out there. So let's say we're at a concert. Front Bottoms is playing. Nicole, start singing some Front Bottoms. I was on LCD. Hey, when I so that I like love this song, don't you, Jose? 
I'm a lady right I now. Love LCD. I mean, yeah, it's yes. LSD. I knew I was saying it wrong. It's LSD. That's but the, she's saying that's LCD, drug. so she doesn't get copywritten. Uh, anyway. Oh, ooh, yep. Yeah, no. I did it on purpose. I, it's our voices are not good enough to have this flagged by the algorithm. Oh. Wow. Because you're better than them. <gasps> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what's up? Let's go somewhere like that's a little less loud even though i love this song so you want to get on stage there's yeah there's i you're freaking coffee, crazy coffee, i just realized on uh on hit it and crit it we did this same exact role play as a window i came okay N- nicole you can we can <laughs> uh, that's getting distracting okay let's say you're on this date and she yeah. says let's go somewhere quiet you respond with let's go on stage i just want to know your thought process with that it's just to see what her response is. Like, if she's like, oh, yeah, let's do it. We'll sneak on. Then, like, or she's like, no, you're fucking crazy. Leave me alone. You know, if she's like, yeah, you know, let's try. Then I'm like, all right, I guess I have to try and do this shit now. But six months down the line, are you still going to be doing this crazy stuff with her? I hope not. I'm, okay, then you can't right off the bat do this. I'm, I'm trying to see how... Look, okay, first of all, I was born a 87-year-old man, all right? So, like... <laughs> Whoa, you Benjamin Button it? Without the Benjamin Button part. Oh, damn. I don't turn... I don't end up looking like fucking Brad Pitt. That's good. Sexy ass. Oh, I thought you were going to say Brad Pitt baby. No, I'm talking about his sexy self. Because women don't want to date someone who turns into a baby. I'm guessing, correct? I don't... It doesn't exist. Okay, so but I, if I were to turn into a baby, bad, correct? Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, any Mortal Kombat people out here, do not come around Jose. Don't babality him. He doesn't want it. No. I I mean, like, if the viewers and listeners can, you know, hook me up with Natsumi. That's all I ask. Oh, man. And speaking of that, do do you think you got anything out of this Tinder stuff? I gave you one advice of, like, be yourself. Don't try to go crazy and be her. I mean, Be yourself. Just the general shit. I mean, yeah. What if you found someone exactly like yourself to the point that you start telling this individual (laughs) that you could possibly just be a figment of her imagination? And then she's like, holy shit, please stop talking like this because I am worried that this might actually be true. No, I would not want to date somebody that's exactly, not exactly, but that's just like me. I need somebody that's different. Nicole and I are exact simpatico. No, because like I said, I'm a piece of shit. I need somebody that's not a piece of shit in my life. You're not a piece of shit. (laughs) You're a full log, baby. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, let's get into this episode summary. We got out on a joke, baby. I don't know what kind of laugh that was. I'm sorry. That was fucking... It sounded like a full body (laughs) laugh. Today, we watched episodes 12 and 13 of Car Ranger entitled The Signal Man Who Comes from Space and Dispatch the Proud Emergency Vehicle Disrespectfully. I don't know if I've made that joke before, and if I did, recurring bit, bitch. But we start off with some sexy wumpers laying out in the sun to dry the fudge out because they are squids, right? They were not doing shit. That's something I, I, I want to say. I guess. I know. I have that down to... But, like, it's fair of him to be suspicious yes. and go check he, it out. Yes, but he immediately went up there and was like, oh, you guys are up to something no good, and then fucking started fighting them. However, but- I would like to say this. If there is a wanted criminal out there and a cop sees this wanted criminal, they could just be, like, riding their bike on a path. Completely legal. The cop is still going to go up to them and say, hey, you are a wanted criminal. I need to bring you in. The Wumpers are wanted and I want them Wumpers. I mean, yes, but like still they were like literally doing nothing. He should have just he, came they up. They were literally doing what he was doing in the scene prior. He should have had his uh, like V sword out and just started stabbing them while they were sleeping. Okay. Just like uh, I will a kid while they're asleep. Or awake. I mean, whatever you want to do. Or... Friggin' stab him. Stab a kid, guys. Please don't. I'm not the Slender Man. Even though last episode would make you think otherwise. Ooh, a Jose just got up right now. He's in devilish shorts. They're red, the devil's color. And he's drinking a water. What a devil would not drink. They drink blood and lava. Will you you read the thing? Yeah, I'm reading your room. But I remember when Nicole and I lived next door to each other and she'd lay out on the lawn with her polka dot bikini on. 
Speak a little France to me. Heard you were drinking <laughs> grapes. Well, I wore a jersey so it would spill. Oh my God. So if it spill, it'd go through the holes. Guys, I business that idea. That well, that was also a front bottoms lyric reference. Business idea. Jersey shirts for the messy eater in your life. Think of it. You walk up to your nana before a big spumemi dinner. <laughs> you know, she's going to make a mess with that mananana sauce, even with a bib on. Boppity boopity. It's not that she's. <laughs> this is a, a, a life bit I've done I with forgot. Nicole. Uh, it's not that she's, you know, dumb in the head, dripping drool elderly. She just loves digging into spamemi and mananana gets everywhere. Well, with a shirt made out of jersey, most of the sauce of the mananana variety goes through the holes, meaning less for you to clean. But the jersey does cover most of her areolas. I bet Cuban is going to buy this quick and not even ask for a stake in the company. Just be a good Samaritan. But our red racer, ooh, red like mananana sauce and some spinani. He's the freaking chillaxin' relaxin' outside of a pool. When a couple of wumps from the neighborhood got in one fight and Dapu scared, he says... Aunt and Urkel whistled for a cab. Nicole, do a little whistle. <laughs> okay, I thought I was... She, 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 she. Oh, there's a whistle. A stinky dice and stinky mirror. Finally there, Prince of Bel-Air. But Red Racer comes back from Bel-Air because he has unfinished business with these sun-bathing wumpers. Red is cornered in a warehouse by a long-head Bozak when all of a sudden... Whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. A man covered in cop signals comes busting in harder than... hoo gotcha all in check. Alt for that oh, okay. joke comes busting in harder than Jean Antoine Houdin. He's famous for making sculptures of busts. Uh, and then uh, uh, another alt for this joke comes busting in harder than cream pie surprise. Now you decide which joke is better than that. Use hashtag Bustin Sentai at MSS Pod on Twitter. We'll get back to that later. Turn to page 73. Ooh, turn to page 420. Blaze it. But this man, Signal Man, lays waste to the Bozak, who are very familiar with this space cop. Unfortunately, this pig of a bitch turns his focus on Red Racer, claiming he broke traffic laws by speeding. Jose, get off your phone. I'm just trying to find something. Oh, what you trying to find? Don't worry about it. Oh, it's a reference to He's cream on pie fucking surprise. Tinder. He oh, lied. No, I'm not. Oh, you getting some cream pie surprise on Tinder, baby? <laughs> He's the getting some broke. spamemis. Ooh, get some spamemis with the mananana and uh, eat it up real quick. Unless you have ulcers, the acidity of the mananana is bad. Mananana. That sounds like something my nephew would say. Mananana. Mananana, baby. Mananana. Hey. Mananana. Hey. hey. Bonana. Minions. Ooh, what if a minion were friggin' fighting with Signal Man? Unfortunately, this pig of a boat or this uh, this goddamn Boy Scout. Wait, wait, no, I should probably start. Unfortunately, this pig of a bitch turns his focus on Red Racer, claiming he broke traffic speeding race laws. This goddamn Boy Scout needs to turn around and head back to Subaraya with number one Toku Boy Scout Ultraman. Signal Man is the kind of guy who, if you asked him the trolley dilemma question, would arrest you for conspiracy to confuse and terrorize an offer and, oh my god. An officer? An officer, officer like the wee below he is. That's a Boy Scout term, baby. What is a wee below? Let me know. Hashtag wee bee bee bee. I think you mean weebo. No, no, it's a wee below. I think you mean no. wee it's, it's like yeah. a- Yeah, uh, thank you. It's like a guy who is in Boy Scouts or girls. They can go there, too, in like fourth or fifth grade. They're a weeblo. I never got to that. Is that like a baby bird? They're I don't a know. little bit below. Guys, I do not like Signal Man. 
I hate him. <laughs> but uh-oh, a.k.a. my favorite segue, Signal Man is chained up by the Bozak. He must be a Christmas ghoulie. But his bicycle with a motor and guns breaks him from the Yuletide chains. And he, along with the Rangers, lay waste to the Bozak. And in the second episode we watched today, Signal Man becomes friends with a child, as a Sentai show does, and wah, 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 tries to rat on the car ranger to Signal Man, saying they were illegally parked and beat the shit out of her brother and drinking some sodas while loitering. Man, she was hot as fuck in this movie, in this wah, episode. Wah, wah. And, and she wasn't high. She was not high as fuck on this oh, one. Oh, yeah, she was. Mm-hmm. I th- Maybe because the Bozak don't need oxygen, they offer her less oxygen. So <laughs> she is very lightheaded well on the, like, Barbablamnum planet, whatever their spaceship's called. Mm-hmm. And when she's on that Earth that no longer has good oxygen because we're killing our planet. <sighs> oh, fresh trees. Unlike the fresh stank inside Grotch's belly button. P.U. I've been there. Done that. I used to pick at my belly button till it bled. Yeah. Kegs of blood. But the gang is too smart to fall for that, and they bust into the Bozak harder than Cream Pie Surprise. That's right. You voted in Cream Pie Surprise. The pornography I used to watch as a teen won the popular vote in a landslide of Cream Pie. In the end, we learned that Ice Cube was right. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground because beneath the dirt you're safe from space cops who only have jurisdiction where the starlight shines. Car Ranger. Man, you totally forgot about big boy Uwu. I mentioned him a little bit. Speaking of him, when he got revived, it's just like Jesus. When Jesus came out of that friggin' stone palace, he had spines in his back and corrective lenses. What is up with big boy Uwu always needing two bars of soap? Uh, no, that's not soap. That's a dessert food that is that made from like sweet potatoes. Big. I don't. I don't know. It looks like soap. He's a glutton. Oh man, somebody better keep him away from Kevin Spacey. This is a seven. This is a seven joke. Before anybody gets upset, I've okay, never there was seen soap it. in that movie. No, you said he's a glutton. Oh, oh yes, because the seven deadly sinners. I don't want anybody to. Also, spoiler alerts, that's about the seven deadly sins. That movie came out in the 90s. Oh, before you were born, baby. Yeah, I think it came out the year I was born. You were born in 2002, post 9-11. Shut the fuck up. No, I was not. I'm a post 9-11, baby. No, you're not. You wish I were. I don't think anybody would risk You wish I were 18 and like, oh yeah, guys, I'm heading to college. So much debt. No. What? Nicole loved Signal Man this episode, guys. She was giggling to his jokes, and she's like, whoa, Signal Man is sexy. And guys, Nicole no longer wants me to be Reen. She no longer wants me to be wah, wah, wah. She wants me to be Signal Man. I was there for that whole exchange. Yes. Sure. I uh, Can I, uh, th- then we can get to notes. I'm also, uh, this is a note. Spoiler alert, it doesn't really matter. Signal Man has a wife, so he does not respect the laws of holy matrimony because he was flirting and getting, like, his signals going, meaning he's getting his jollies off. Maybe it's different in Zoneta. space. It could be different in space. I'm just... Yeah, it you could know be all what kind of marriage he has? Because we're from Ursh. Yeah. He's from Police Planet. And he's a fucking robot. I don't think he's a robot. Yeah, he's not he a is. robot. I think he has a helmet. It's like the the race car driver from the episode uh, "You Turn in the Stars." Did was he? He wasn't a robot. He was a, yeah. He was an alien. Yeah, baby. The, the superhero of our dreams. Soon you're gonna start telling me a Terminator's a robot. Yeah. They have a soul inside it's an of android. them. Android. Yeah. Android eighteen. You love him, Nicole. What it's what true. notes do you have? What notes? Yeah. Get goofy, baby. Ooh, she just took in a deep breath. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the way, um, you know, they're like their changer thing. The that, XL changer. The that flips out a key. Yes, I've probably brought this up before. It just 
when it shows like their full body and not just a close up, it always looks like a switchblade. <laughs> I'm fine with that. So I just like he saw the squids up on the roof and he just like pulls out a switchblade. I was like, Jesus Christ. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's his key. This is a little extreme. I think those keys were made to look like a switchblade. To just so like people feel cool and well, powerful. Well, my mom has one like that for her car. Yeah, and, and she I probably like feels... to play with it, and I like to pretend it's a switchblade. Exactly. You can break it though. That's the only scary part. Well, then you just glue it back on. Uh, that's not how that works. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's how adhesive is. Uh, you ever mush two things together and they don't <laughs> stick, but then you like spit on it and it kind of does, <laughs> and then you're like, you want to know what would be better? Adhesive. Exactly. Got you in a conundrum, sir. What's your favorite kind of adhesive? Adhesive, cum. Oh, man. I was going to say besides cum, but I was like, I don't need to say this for Jose. He's mature. I'm the youngest one in the group. Yes, but you are mature. Besides Joe, you are the most mature, I would think. Oh, okay. I mean, I would say. Thank you. I appreciate that. I believe. Uh, I think my favorite is uh, rubber cement because you can get high off that shit. Ooh. I mean, I've never done it, but like, it sounds interesting. It's a possibility. What about when you put it on your hands and then you peel it off? Oh, I'd love to do that. I used yeah. to do that a lot in elementary school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I used to put like glue around my thumb and then paint on the glue with permanent marker and then just peel the the glue off. And that was weird. I'm sorry. I used. We all did it. Th- that exact thing? I, I think. No, no, I didn't. I We would just like coat our entire hand in glue we used and to do dry that too, it yeah. and then like peel it off. I used to coat X-Men figures from Burger King in toilet paper and then burn them as- Oh my God. No, but then I, as if like- they fell in battle and I'd oh, cry. Oh, like a Viking funeral? Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> you Night push them out to no. see. Who's your favorite X-Men character? Uh, pfft, The Dazzler. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, no, I'm kidding. It's not Dazzler. Oh. I mean, mine isn't. If yours is. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I just like, if I had to choose, I would say Psylocke just because. I agree. I like, I respect that. I like Psylocke a lot, but I think my favorite one is Gambit. Yeah, Gambit's pretty cool. He's like, oh, I had about a chevron. I'm so sorry I cut you off. I just realized. I'm sorry. No, I just because like her outfit's cool. Guys, let us know your favorite X-Men. Hashtag. Hashtag. Marvel hashtag Sentai. Wolverine because Hugh Jackman. Yeah, Wolverine's good, baby. So yeah, I guess if I had to pick, it would actually be Wolverine. Mine is the greatest of X-Men, the X himself, Professor Xavier. Oh, Lame. not X-Man? No, not X-Man. Lame. Okay. I love an axe-wielding man. That's lame. Like our good friend Giram, he has a hammer. I'm kidding. The viewers can't see this, but I'm vigorously shaking my head at Ooh. James. I like when it's something vigorously shakes. Uh, Viscously. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, let's get into some more. You note. know, uh, the Phoenix, and everyone was like, oh, the movie's real bad. And I'm like, yeah, because the comic was bad. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, that, it, it was so good. And I'm like, no, it's boring. <laughs> What happened? It's so does like I only vaguely remember, and it was stupid because they were like, "Oh, you killed millions of people. That's fine. We'll let you. That's fine. You can just hide in Genosha." Does Wolverine help out? Mm. I don't know. Probably. So there's a storyline called the House of M, or not the House of M. It's um M uh, X Men, X Men versus the Avengers, and no, I thought they were friends. There's an incident that happens where Scott and Jean's child has the Phoenix entity in them, and Wolverine doesn't take side with the X Men because he feels like no one should have the power of the the Phoenix Force. That's like the only instance that I can think of off the top of my head where he fights the I was just thinking in uh X3 god no so that like that doesn't I I fucking hated that one okay cuz I was thinking maybe dudes like Dark Phoenix because they identify with Wolverine of like I'm going to help this like sick woman who I love but, but that's just X3 that's not Dark Phoenix so the Dark Phoenix you don't see Wolverine in it in okay. the in the, in the movie well, no, I'm talking about like the story. I haven't. No, I don't remember. It. It's been a long time. 
Okay. Hey, guys. I guess fuck Dark Phoenix, baby. Just all around. Yeah. Check out that Rule 34. Okay. I was going to say something, but like, I know this probably will never hinder my future um, employments. So, I mean, if you want to bleep this out, bleep it out. But man, fuck Sony. <laughs> fuck Fox and Sony. They just don't do justice for comic book movies. You no, know, you want to know what I want to say? I just found this out. Screw Disney because when they bought Fox, they canceled a bunch of movies. Well, when that stream of movies got canceled, like 200, one of them was a Small Soldiers reboot. <laughs> Fuck. I know. I don't know why you just, like, over the past year, just resurfaced your obsession with small soldiers. Because I, I, don't, I don't have a lot of things to do. <laughs> I, it's either work or, like, I'll hop on Wikipedia. But I've always loved small soldiers. Yeah. I've beat that. I still have the game for PC, and I've beat it many times in my adulthood. Mm. It was such a good movie. Yeah, baby. I had it on VHS. Yeah, baby. That and, like, the 90s... X-Men cartoon. I had the entire series on VHS. Whoa. That could flesh a pretty pen. I don't know where it's at now. I'm pretty sure my mom got rid of it. Ooh, your mom's usually sounding cool, but right now she sounds like a real bitch. When has my mom sounded (laughs) cool? When she said, your broken arm and we got to get you to a hospital. When she said, hey man, I don't want you thrashing your big old head on my china. (laughs) Go run around. (laughs) Be in a sport. (laughs) I mean, we didn't have any fine china in my house. We were, we were poor. You had like near mint china. Eh? It's a comic book rating joke. Fine china. Yeah, but near mint is better than yes. fine. I'm saying he's, so. he's guys, Jose's fucking rich. I'm fucking poor. Don't lie It'd to them. They're going to want me to, to be their fucking ba- he had sugar GD daddy. China. That's the word. He had fair china. Uh, not exactly. He had poor China. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I was trying to think of what the worst is. Yeah, it's poor. Because we were poor. I don't know what to tell you. I had lip smack in China. Because when I see a near mint comic book, my lips start smacking to keep in the drool. Ew. Yeah, I see like a that's... signed copy of the mask issue zero and I'm like, Ugh. Ew. <laughs> that's, that's pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. What's the hottest comic book you've ever seen? And not the content, just the comic book itself. I don't know. There's one scene. Just any jungle fantasy (laughs) comic book. What's jungle fantasy? Is that a genre? It's like, it's no, it's a series. It's just porn, basically. (laughs) There's one weird scene in one of my favorite comic books called Saga where there's this giant spider lady who has like a shit ton of eyes, but she has like the legs of a spider and a woman torso. But it's like... Yeah, it's the best fucking character. I know, but I'm not going to say what happened. It's the hottest comic you've ever seen. That's, That's like the happened. hottest scene I've seen. What it is, is you friggin' want... Because <laughs> you're drooling. Like Homer seeing a donut. You know though that classic scene where he goes... Donut. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's spiral for you. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Hot comics. So Nicole and I, or and my friends as well, we didn't have a very good comic book store in our town, but in towns near us. We didn't have a comic book store. Lings. That's why I said not a good comic book store. That wasn't in Muskegon until like we left. No, Lang's was by the egg roll house. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So we would go to these other ones and whenever we would go, if they had like a few boxes like up on a shelf, I knew those were like that like hentai comics. So I would always just dash to that just to, <laughs> I would never buy them. I was just fascinated that these things, not just that they were drawn, if they were drawn and like put up on the Internet, that's one thing. But to draw, call up a company to say like, hey, can you print this for me? Oh, absolutely. Send us in the negatives. You send in the negatives because this is how long ago it was. They say, yeah, of course, we'll print this. Then it's printed. And then comic book stores have it. It's bonkers. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's it, it all comes down to censorship, right? Like in Japan, because you said it's a hentai, right? Uh, like- no, I was just like, some of it is. Some of it was like elf lord or elf quest i know i'm getting it wrong but there was like an elf quest type thing it was pretty much the same exact drawing but like he had a boner and one of the elven maidens gave him a blow job 
And she's like, Ma, never. <laughs> I think I still have it. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I thought you had one of those. Yeah, yeah. I, because I don't think Chicago Comics would have taken it. I don't know. Oh, no, it's, they take a lot of weird stuff, you've told me. Have you ever been to Alley Cat? Yeah. I love Alley Cat. Yeah. It's nice and cozy, especially in the winter when it's starting to snow. Go to Alley Cat. Yeah, yeah. It's the greatest. I've been going there since I was in eighth grade. Dang, man. Yeah, that's the- That was like three years ago. That's like the Fuck only off. other comic book store we'll go to is Alley Cat. And the other one is- Chicago Comics. The one she works at? The one I've I never been there, work actually. at. You need to go. I have to. How have you not been into like every comic book store? Because for a while I didn't wasn't really into reading comics. I mean, I was I've always been like super into like the superhero content and just really good storylines. But like I said, we were poor, and then I never really had the the chance to go read like go to comic book stores just to read comics. Because my mom had us in sports and she wanted us to keep us busy. Yeah. So when we weren't in sports, we were at home and we weren't allowed to leave the house. Uh-huh. So I haven't really like I'm st- like Joe reads a shit ton of comics and he's always sending me stuff to read so i'm I'm slowly but surely trying to get back into it again i'm similar like that i never read comics as a kid because the comic book store outer limits in grand rapids was a few blocks down but in the it was a very small store but the front of it has like toys and you know dungeons and dragons books or franchise books so like at the time they had a lot of pokemon like manuals and such and then there's oh my kind gosh, of like, I have a story about that when you're done. Okay. And then there's like kind of a divider into the back section. Well, the back section, all I could see was a just very scary spawn poster back there. So I was like, oh, that's for adults. I cannot go back there. Nicole? What's up? What? You said you had a story. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we have like a Pokemon handbook. And one day this kid was just like literally like laying on the floor looking through this book, which normally like would piss me off. But it was so cute because he was like looking at something and he was like, what? I didn't know Beedrill evolved into this one. Oh, my God. <laughs> like the whole I was like, oh, my fucking God, that is so cute. Like he was just so excited. Like stuff like that, like makes me happy like seeing little kids and younger generations get into like pokemon and digimon and like but like the original like staying true to that makes me happy but when it's all like fortnite and other bullshit i'm like i don't want to be part of this pop culture (laughs) you should have said hey to blow his mind you should have said hey did you know eevee when you put a stone on it it turns to a different thing (laughs) what that's what uh, that's pokemon (laughs) I just explained Pokemon to you. When you put a Firestone on an Eevee, it turns to a Flareon. You put a stone on it, it turns to a thing. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, hey, uh, just go find a stone and put it on your uh, your Eevee, guys. Not to be confused with Eevee trainers. I thought when people are like, oh, and I, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm in Eevee training, all of this. I was like, yeah, my brother does that too. Not thinking that it's this whole, like extreme way to raise pokemon my brother just had a team of five uh (laughs) evs uh, and like he evolved all of them into their different stages wait are you the youngest yes same you got a brother i got two older sisters yeah guys Ooh, i have one older sister one older brother one of them talks to me nicole you got any pressing notes yeah All right, let's get to it, baby. Okay, really quick. I thought, okay, I do. I just enjoy Signal Man. He's fun. He's kind of like very cartoonish and goofy, and I like it. But also like, because it's like kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say in an innocent way, but like, I don't know. Anyway, the scene where he was pulling over the go-kart for speeding was fucking hilarious. Oh, and then him just like falling in love was really cute. Even though he's married, I just liked guys. It. And it was so cute when he was like, guard this police station. And he was like, okay. <laughs> Their relationship like, yes. is amazing. It keeps growing. It's great. I love seeing this. I with... know it does because I've seen yeah. you watch like further episodes. So I know that it does, which maybe like knowing that made it cuter. Yeah. I don't know. I do like watching this with you guys because originally those first Signal Man episodes, I hated Signal Man. I don't like him either. I mean, he kind of reminds, and this is a very personal thing. He reminds me of a lot of the kids I went to high school with. 
who were trying too hard because I went to a naval academy and they were trying too hard to pretend like they're in the military, but we were in JROTC. Mm-hmm. Hey, ladies, he's disciplined. <laughs> and then, like in the <laughs> in the army, there's a lot of people like that too who are like just trying too hard to like kind of sounds dumb, but trying too hard to play by the rules when sometimes like we don't have time to do everything the way it's just. I don't hey, like ladies. People. He doesn't play by the rules. Like some things don't matter as much as Thank they you. make it out to yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the regulation says this, and you're like, yes, we know what the regulation says, but like it also says this, and like, no. Like, All right, whatever, man. And that's Signal Man. But I, I like Signal Man this time around, step by step. But also, like, I like how he gained their respect. In, like, a cool way and not just, like, he wasn't, like, a dick about it. He was just, like, whatever, I'm going to do what needs to be done. Like, I'm not going to worry about what they think about me. Signal man, guys. Let us know what you think of him. Hashtag just signal man. That's all you need. He doesn't give a fuck, though. Ooh, he's just, like, our boy over here, Jose. He don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm heating on you, Melzer. Oh, no, I was talking about, <laughs> the, I was saying the ladies oh, no, get I, funky. I, I, I do. I'm very sensitive and emotional. He'll sorry. uptown funk you up. Ooh. I would like to say Ichiro uh, took the director's acting notes and just middle fingered them hard. He's like, I'm going to show no emotion in my face. I'm just going to be a dead eyed kid. <laughs> I think that's just how he always is. Yeah. TC ruined these kid actors by I saying guess. they don't use any, they just scream <laughs> their lines instead of using any facial acting. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I think it works with the character. Yeah, I mean, I was just making a Josh, guys. Just, just like okay. your mummy and daddy did. They made a Josh. Ah, my brother's name is Josh. Hey. Make a Josh. Hey, guys out there, if you've ever made a Josh, let us know. <laughs> and physically or literally or figuratively. Because you like, oh, I'm just Josh. And yeah, that's making a Josh. Yeah. Guys... Do you have any pressing notes? I think I'm done. I have no notes. I was just, I was too into this, these episodes that I could barely like write anything down. It was just, it's, mm-hmm. this is a great series. Uh, start watching it on your own. Oh, in your episode summary, you said that the car rangers were smart and figured it out, but it's only because the gross green thing was like humping the pink ranger. I wrote this by just looking at Wikipedia summaries I'm and just pointing this it episode. Out. So some people are like, that's not right. Hey. You're n- welcome. Most of my episode summary was not right. Did <laughs> something fall? Oh, wonder what that was. Probably Frank my boxing. Dignity. Ooh, your dignity fell. It's probably from one heaven. of those bats I taped up. Oh, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was my heart. Your heart fell for what? Natsumi. Oh, she's my wife. You every Zonko. time she every time she came up on the screen, Natsumi, Jose would go, My wife. My wife. It's cause his, she's a strong independent woman and I love that. His signal lights would light up. Yeah, because yeah, you just love breaking down strong independent people. No. no. <laughs> wow. Uh, let me get through some stuff. I said it's, he's got a chalk sword as he was ru- running it across, yeah, and I accidentally said dumb. I mistaken it for cock sword, which sounds kind of <laughs> like cock. Uh, th- he's a friggin' space pig. No one can hear you oink out here. Uh, <laughs> and then there is one thing on the wikia during the like summary. It's it's going, it's going, and then it says signal man turns around on his bike and starts shooting Bozak. But it says, Signal Man starts shooting Bozak while turned around, in parentheses, which is illegal to do because you can't be on a bicycle turned around like he was committing a crime. Yeah. Ooh. But he's a cop, so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Oh, yeah, guys. Be a cop. You can do whatever you want. That person you didn't like in high school, you can pull them over. Find out where they live. Break into their house, but it won't be Plant breaking and entering. Push their car into a lake. Yeah. Commit murder. Owl their kid. Middle finger their dad. <laughs> I was just about to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god! Smash their mint to poor China. I have nothing from that. And you want to know what? Tell their kid that you'll catch them, but let them fall on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make sure their arm breaks and they get. And since you're a cop, as they're falling, you could also kick the kid to like punt them higher into the gr- into the air, and then they fall again. Because guys, you know, this is a movie. Gravity, right? Yeah, gravity binds us all to the earth. But uh, love binds us all to the heart. You keep saying it wrong. What? It's Ursh. Oh, yeah, guys. I think that's all we got today, baby. I think so, yeah. I mean, is that everything, Nicole? Yeah. All right. All right. Jose, you got anything to plug? Yeah. Follow me and my friends on Instagram it, for our D&D podcast. It's called Hit It and Crit It. You've heard us reference it before. There was a Coliseum episode where James was the DM, and oh. it's fucking fantastic. Oh. And if you don't fucking... Check it out. Oh. I will fucking find you. And I don't Plan know what I'll do evidence. when I see you, but he'll kick your kid. I'll f- I'll find you. Yeah, and follow us on Instagram. It's uh, hit it and crit it. Our Instagram is hit it underscore and underscore crit it. And then our Twitter is hit it and crit it. No ampersand, no underscore. And then follow me on Instagram if you think I'm kind of funny and you want to talk to me or DM me. Uh, that's if you Lito want a middle finger M underscore L underscore Cubano. Did you just get this Instagram? No, I've had it for a while. You've but never plugged it before because I was in a relationship. Oh, I mean, you can still plug your Instagram. Yeah, but now I'm being a piece of shit and posting and pictures of myself, you know, on, on my Instagram trying to be cute and shit. But, oh. you know, but might delete later. I did on one <laughs> of them. I'll show you later. It's an Instagram story. Nicole, what you got to plug? Hi. Um, 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 um. Visit darlinghomebody.com and go to Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr and follow me at Darling Homebody. And October, I'm releasing a bunch of cute shit. So be open to that and it's going to be great. Yeah, baby. And hey, guys, like I said, it's just our anniversary, my birthday as well, of Nicole and I's love. Birth anniversary. Oh, you want to know what? Because it's our anniversary, I'll put I'm Still Here at the end of the pod. <gasps> That's a love song I made for Nikki Jake back in the day. <gasps> Ooh, and, oh, man, I forgot. I wanted to like just open up some of the poetry that I wrote you, uh, but... I you forgot that to do that. And I'll get there. I read some of the poetry on there. I did. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So guys, please go to Redbubble, purchase something that helps our podcast out. Please, if you haven't listened to my other podcasts, such as This Movie's Gay, What the Hell Mouth, or Hit It and Crit hey. It, please go listen to those. That would be the best gift you could give me is getting those numbers up or go to MLM pod for more information about that. I mean, MLMPod.com. It is a website or download my music under marsh <laughs> land <laughs> monster. <laughs> it's all free up there. You can also find me on YouTube, Facebook and SoundCloud. Just search marsh land monster. That's three words. Unlike people on marquees that I've done friggin shows for they like to make it marshland one word monster and also be on the lookout for todd groban's going away party follow at channel flux that's f-l-u-x-x and muscular clown how it's spelled we'll have melzer and friends back on soon to promote their stuff i think i've been james i have one more thing yeah what's (gasps) up baby my birthday is october 21st so if you guys want to just say happy birthday I know it's it's after this, but you know, yeah, October twenty first, come say happy birthday or come hang out with us. I might try and do a birthday party thing. Yeah, baby. How old are you gonna be? Twenty two. Twenty two. Did either of you plug hit it and crit it? Yeah, we just both okay. did. Yeah. Well, I blacked out for yeah, a guys, second. Yeah, guys, the Coliseum episode, it's part one, and then at the time of this release, part two will be out. It's a three-part saga. It's me DMing in a wave. I'm throwing waves of monsters at them in a Coliseum setting. It's really fun. Also, check out the new intro to the to the podcast for Hit It and Crit It. It's fucking dope. Well, yeah, they'll hear that when they listen to the episode. He's giving you a compliment. Wow, I'm trying to you. get people, I'm trying to, you know, you know, real... Real men more, you know? Yeah, guys. But now I believe I'm James. I'm Nicole. I'm Jose. And we've been Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Bye bye. Today, I wish to.
to speak my feelings. When I see you, my heart beats like a choo-choo train. When you stand near me, I get so nervous I cannot move. What should we do? We should hug. I used to think girls like you could only be found on the movie screen. A beauty queen, red poopy dream. Rock 'em, sock 'em, goofy team. Girl, shoot me, please. Oopsie me, cause I'm hopeless, but not like before. No cough, red scarf, or bracelet. No tear jerking, no dumb my roommate's door. I'm hopeless, cause I'm in this ocean, floating by my lonesome. Waiting for the storm and the torrent to wash me ashore to a vacant island that has emerald beaches and rosy peaches, and no one's there to own them. Yeah, the lilac breeze through the calm palm trees as I bask on the beach is the greatest island. I'm not lying, I'm not leaving, and why in the fuck would I? I can see that you're gorgeous, even if I catch just one good eye, so no goodbyes couldn't swallow my pride. I was choking inside till you gave me faith in something. I'm loving, I love, and seeing you blush my stomach's like the taste of nothing. Yeah, I'm puffing. Cause you're making me nervous Butterflies flutter my guts inside beneath the surface Am I worth it, worthless Till this girl made of pastels and paint Who knows? All I know is I'm still here And I'm glad that I stayed now I'm still I just like you. I think I, I think I like like you. Listen, when I look at you, my brain goes all stupid, and I just want to hug you and sit on the couch and, and play Nemo with you. I can't explain why, but I've never felt this way, and I think we should be together. To their love of Espanol. No, I hate <laughs> that, that. That's the one I'm, wor- I'm using. God damn it! Why? Down to their love of Espanol. <laughs> James, God I swear it. to God, <laughs> if you don't do a clean take. All right, serious face now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> This has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today.